What's up everybody? I'm a pothead and we're gonna go deep into the topic of marijuana for sports and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody? It's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in learning more about strength training, you wanna be an explosive freak, you wanna dominate your opponents and you wanna learn if it's okay to get stoned, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a beast. So you're training really, really hard. You've got a big meet coming up, you've got a big competition, and you're busting your butt in the gym. You're doing all the weight training that you need to possibly do. You're getting stressed, you're fatigued, you're sore. You're starting to lose a little bit of weight. Your cortisol levels are starting to go up. You're getting a little antsy. You know that that big comp is coming. You know that you're doing all this work in the weight room. You know that you're doing all the stuff that you need to for your respective sport, and you can't seem to shake that stress, that edge. That edge is just there and it's eating away you. You're laying in bed staring at the ceiling. And so what do you do? One of your buddies says, hey, you should just get high, bro. Like, just go out and just get high. Just take a couple rips off this bubbler and just get stoned. You're gonna feel better, bro. And so you start to think about it. Is this okay? Is it okay for me to train really, really hard to do everything I need to do and to get high or is it the devil's lettuce? Is it going to kill you? Is it going to take you over and dominate the rest of your life? And so these are questions that are actually asked all the time. A lot of people want to know, is it okay to utilize marijuana if we're training for a serious sport? And so we're gonna go into all these different topics. And so we're gonna start off with what is pot? What is marijuana, right? This is a serious question. It is a cannabis sativa plant. and it, Mainly what it comes down to is there's two main cannabinoids in this plant. There's actually 120 plus different cannabinoids, but the two main ones that we're gonna be focused on is gonna be tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, and that second one is gonna be cannabidiol. Now, this one really doesn't matter. Cannabidiol is going to be CBDs. It's gonna be the non-psychoactive compound that's found in the marijuana pot plant. But the main one, the psychoactive one, is tetrahydrocannabinol. THC is the main problem. This is the, the main compound that's, that's the boogeyman that's gonna take over your soul and spirit and pull it out and ruin your life, or so you've been told. And so we can think about right away, THC is the main issue here. It's psychoactive. It can change, it can impair your thought process, it can sedate you slightly where you just feel a little fatigued. And that's the main issue historically that people have had with marijuana. And so how is it consumed? You can smoke a joint, which is similar to smoking a cigarette, okay? You're smoking a joint, maybe there's a small filter in there, it's gonna be burning pretty hot. You could be smoking out of a bong, so giant four-footer, you're taking a big rip and you're just completely whacked, right? You've got bubblers, you've got pipes, a little bit easier, you've got edibles. So maybe you're in Colorado and you go buy some gummy bears that have THC in them. Maybe you're in Washington or the other 44 states that have legalized marijuana to a point, and you're consuming any of these edibles, chocolate, whatever, to help you get high, to help you feel recovered, to help you handle the stress that you've taken on, knowing that you have that big competition coming up. And so that takes us into that next question. Is marijuana legal? Is it okay to utilize marijuana if we're being drug tested by USADA or by WADA? Is that okay? So first, when we're talking about USADA and WADA, we've got to touch on what is USADA? What is WADA? So USADA is the United States Anti-Doping Agency. So they come to gyms, they go to places, they go to homes, they come to our gym about every two weeks, and they'll come in and they'll drug test our weightlifters, our throwers, our athletes, whoever you can imagine. And you can look up all of our athletes on the USADA database to find this out. 
and they'll come in and they'll test you for performance enhancing drugs. So out of competition, they're looking for a performance enhancing drugs. And what they're doing is they're trying to make sure that there's a level playing field for all athletes. WADA is the world anti-doping agency. WADA is the world body that's going to be trying to maintain a level playing field for all athletes in, in various different sports. And so we've got to realize that they're the ones who are setting the rules. They're setting the actual standards for athletes to abide by. So in 2011, they made a statement about marijuana and they came out and they essentially said that marijuana covers at least two out of their three issues around the criteria of a banned substance. And so that first one is based around executive function. And I think the quote was something along the lines of when you smoke marijuana or the spice, it can have a negative impairment on your executive function. It can impair the way you're operating. Now, ironically, the second statement that they utilize is that for some sporting disciplines, marijuana can actually have a performance enhancing aspect behind it. So a lot of people might sit there and say, well, what the heck is marijuana gonna help with performance enhancement? And it can, if you're thinking about shooting, if you're thinking about the biathlon where you're, you're cross country skiing and you've got to hit a target, anything that's going to be very, very skill oriented, very precision based, and you might have a slight shake in your hand, you might be really, really nervous. If you think about the impact of marijuana and what we talked about earlier with THC, THC can relax you a little bit. So now you can see, all right, well, if, if you're in the biathlon, you might actually calm yourself down if you're utilizing THC. So there is some sport disciplines that it can have a positive impact on. And finally, the third criteria is based around, is smoking marijuana gonna have a negative impact on athletes being role models for young children? That's really important for all of us to understand. So those three aspects have led marijuana to being banned in competition. Now, in 2019, CBD was taken off the list. So you can utilize various products that have, that are hemp derived. So hemp plants are sister plants to the marijuana plant. They're in the exact same realm, but hemp does not have THC or has very, very low levels of THC. It has very high levels of CBD. So you can utilize hemp derived CBD products as of 2019. Now, here's where it becomes interesting, is that around the same time, USADA and WADA also changed the level, the threshold of THC that you can have in your urine or that you can have in your blood. And so now, that threshold establishes that it is okay if you have some THC in your system in competition so that's a key factor here in competition you can have a little bit of thc up to a threshold in your urine or in your blood out of competition again out of competition they don't care if you're getting stoned every night or if you're smoking or whatever it is that you're doing you're eating gummies and you're having fun and you're recovering you can utilize thc you can utilize marijuana and not piss hot, okay? Meaning you're not gonna test positive. So out of competition, they don't care. It's in competition where they've established that urinary and blood threshold. Now that takes us into TUEs. So what are TUEs? TUEs are therapeutic use exemptions, okay? So some thyroid drugs might be banned, and if you have a thyroid problem, you can apply for a TUE to utilize a thyroid drug and WADA or USADA can analyze, all right, they are getting prescribed some thyroid drug, whatever it might be. Another factor, some athletes might actually have narcolepsy. This is another popular drug that tends to have TUEs. But some of the drugs that athletes utilize for narcolepsy can be serious stimulants. They can also be nootropics. So you have to have diagnosed issues with narcolepsy to get these TUEs to utilize these drugs and it's the same concept with marijuana. So if you have a reason, maybe it's a post-traumatic stress disorder or something along these lines, and you need to have marijuana based off of a doctor, well, you can apply for a TUE, but USADA and WADA 
reserve the right to deny that PUE. And this takes us into that threshold, okay? So what is that threshold? Can I smoke before I compete? Or how long prior to my competition should I stop utilizing marijuana? And so the current threshold is 150 nanograms per milliliter. I believe this number up until 2010, 2011 used to be like 30, which basically means 30 nanograms per milliliter is, you should essentially stop smoking like a month out from competition. Now, the threshold is very dependent upon various different things, and that's the dosage of marijuana that you're utilizing, the frequency in which you're utilizing marijuana, your body fat percentage, your metabolism, the potency, and your general health as well. All of these things can impact how long THC stays in your system. And again, we've got to remember, it's tetrahydrocannabinol that they are concerned about. So for 150 nanograms per milliliter, that can vary. For some athletes, that might be four or five days. For some athletes, that might be 12. It really, really depends on different athletes and whether or not you're gonna be utilizing marijuana for various different reasons. So there is a threshold, but there still is a point where you need to stop utilizing marijuana before you know you might get drug tested. I would say typically from my experience with various athletes, from what I've heard, seven to nine days out is a very safe realm for utilizing marijuana before that in competition test. So this leads us into our health risks and benefits. Essentially, not even just of marijuana, but of tetrahydrocannabinol THC, the psychoactive compound found in the marijuana pot plant. So let's look at it from two different perspectives. We got risks, we've got benefits. We've got acute and we've got chronic. So when we're thinking about this, let's go right over with the risks. From, a, from an acute perspective, or let's just say you use it once a week or once every 10 days, something along those lines, it's not really frequent. You're not utilizing it all the time. One of the risks is you might feel a little bit sedated, meaning, you know, don't think about it as, as a aspect of you're gonna be pinned to your chair and you're not even gonna be awake. Like you, you just got your wisdom teeth removed and you're sedated. It's not that type of sedated. You're gonna be a little bit calmer and you're gonna have this altered sense of time. Things might be moving a little bit slower. Your mood might change negatively or positively, depending on different aspects and how you react and how you can handle this strange feeling of being stoned, of being high, right? And your appetite is gonna be altered. So for some people, that's a risk, that your appetite might be altered and you might eat a lot of food at night after eight o'clock when you're really stressed and you're trying to go to bed. Now, if we're talking about chronic usage here, People can get lazy, right? People can get really lazy. There's a classic image of a stoner and they're just lazy. They're sitting on the couch, eating potato chips, watching, you know, Chasing Amy or some 90s movie and uh, mall rats maybe. And that's just what happens. That's just this typical stereotype. And that can also lead to weight gain and it can lead to potentially poor memory. But I typically believe that that poor memory is just related directly back to laziness. If you're just sitting around eating junk food, getting high all day and watching TV, you're gonna have bad memory mainly because you're a dumbass. So we've got to think about it from that perspective is, is it the result of just being a stoner or is it from the actual compound? And I believe it's actually from just being a stoner. So what are some of the benefits here? From an acute perspective, if I just you know go out and I smoke or whatever, or I use an edible. Again, I'm somewhere in the state of Pennsylvania. It's legal to get if you have a prescription and you might need something to calm down. So from an acute perspective, you eat some edibles and you've got to relax, you've got to calm down. So that's a good benefit. It also is a good benefit from an acute perspective if you need your appetite to increase. And we'll touch on this a little bit later with chronic benefits. Sleep. Some people who need it for sleep, they're stressed, they're working all the time, they've got a lot on their mind, they've got a lot of things going on in their life, they might utilize it for sleep. Now, to go back over here to the wrists, some people, when they utilize marijuana, they might get uh, panicky. Okay, and so I should have put that in here. Let's put that under altered. Some people might feel paranoid or panic. And I think that's really, really important to touch upon because some people who feel panicked or uh, anxious when they utilize it, these people might have 
other areas and, and other things they need to work on. And I believe that they should go to therapy and they should not be utilizing any of these drugs without the consent from doctors, right? A lot of this stuff goes back to that. If you're gonna utilize anything like this, you should talk to your doctor about it. You shouldn't just be self-medicating. You should communicate with professionals about these things. So you might get panicky here, but that also leads us into the, those benefits from an acute perspective. Some people really relax when they utilize it and they get better sleep. They also, some people might also have social anxiety disorders. I remember reading about Ricky Williams and reading about Michael Phelps. These are world-class athletes, the best Olympian of all time used to smoke marijuana to help him with his social anxiety, to help him even to a point with some of his depression. But Ricky Williams also did this. You know, back when he won the Heisman Trophy, he was doing interviews with his helmet on because he was afraid to communicate with people and he struggled with social anxiety. And utilizing marijuana was a huge positive for him from that acute perspective and from that chronic perspective. And actually, I wanted to share my own story is that I recently had surgery on my neck. You can see the scar here. So I had neck surgery and I went into neck surgery and I was panicking, right? I thought I was gonna die. It was gonna be the last day I was ever gonna live, blah, blah, blah. The anesthesiologist and the doctor, when they both, they were taking my blood pressure, my blood pressure was off the charts, just completely off the charts because I thought I'd never see my kids again. And one of the big things that stuck in my mind was they said to me, have you ever utilized marijuana? Well, yeah, I've used it, okay? well. You should have used it today before you came in to get neck surgery so it would calm you down. This is the anesthesiologist and the doctor who did my neck surgery telling me I should have gotten a prescription to take it because it would have helped me relax going into surgery. Now, I wish I knew that before I went into surgery, but that's an acute situation that it can really have a positive benefit. From a chronic perspective, PTSD. Mike Tyson was on the Joe Rogan show talking about you know, PTSD and how his mom was an alcoholic and a drug abuser, and he grew up in a very volatile environment. And for him, utilizing marijuana makes him a better person. He likes utilizing it because he likes who he is when he's on it. When he's not utilizing it, he feels like he struggles with a lot of these different issues from growing up. Do you smoke? And I like who I am when I smoke. You know what I mean? When I'm when I weed, I don't sometimes like who I am sometimes. That's just the real sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that guy. I want to get away from that guy. It's it's hard for some people like yourself that did grow up in an environment like that to ever reach where you're at right now, just a place of peace. And if you can do that through marijuana or whatever it is, yoga, meditation, whatever whatever you do to get there. Like, we should be happy that you can get there. That's what I'm, we want. I'm, listen, I am so grateful that um, I embarked on this. You know, I've never been a person to this at this magnitude, at this kind of relaxation. I just enjoying my time with you. I was very uptight. I didn't, I didn't sound, I was just very uncomfortable with myself. It can also help with anxiety. It helps with seizures. It helps with muscle spasms. It helps with stress management. Again, it helps with sleep from a chronic perspective. And to go further, it helps with improving appetite. So a lot of individuals who might be undergoing cancer chemotherapy or cancer radiation treatments, they don't want to eat anything. They feel terrible. They have no energy. They feel like crap. A lot of those individuals benefit tremendously from utilizing the psychoactive compound of tetrahydrocannabinol or THC. It helps them feel better then they eat a little bit more and they can recover a little bit more effectively in between their cancer treatments. One final thing I wanna mention is that from a chronic perspective, a lot of people will sit there and say, oh, you're gonna turn into this terrible person, but there's a lot of individuals, a lot of popular figures who utilize it and they still hold themselves accountable to be outstanding citizens in society. And that's the one key factor is that it's not a, don't be a lazy stoner. It's utilizing it as well as you possibly can and understanding that these are the risks and these are the benefits. So from a federal perspective, is it illegal or is it legal? It is still considered in the United States a schedule one drug. So that means that you're at risk of high abuse. They'll say that marijuana is as detrimental as heroin, as crack cocaine, from a federal perspective, that's, that's absurd, but anyway. Now, with that being said, there's 
44 states in the United States that have it legalized either completely or from a medical usage perspective. And in some states it's even medical with decriminalization, but there's quite a bit of states. I, I think it's upwards close to 20 now that it's fully legal. I even, I think Nebraska, you might even be fully legal when we're talking about marijuana. I'm not positive about that, but there's 44 states that it is legal in some sense. There's only six states where it's fully illegal. So from a federal perspective, you're not supposed to utilize marijuana. From a state perspective, it's really state by state by state. So it's interesting with laws in the US because you have to know where you're at, where are you training as an athlete, and what is legal, what is not legal is dependent upon where your residence is based. So this leads us into the big topic behind marijuana now, and that is what's my analysis? What do I think about marijuana? What do I think about pot, about THC? Is it bad? Is reefer madness gonna happen? Is it the devil's lettuce, or is it the sweet leaf that Ozzy Osbourne used to sing, okay? So at the end of the day, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's perfectly fine. And all the people out there who think it's bad, get a clue, okay? It's way better than alcohol. And I actually try to get my athletes to stop drinking. Alcohol is significantly worse. It can impair your judgment horribly. It can seriously impair your recovery. It can ruin your sleep. It can increase your estrogen levels if you're a male. It can just wreak havoc on your system. And on top of that, it just leads to horribly poor decision making. So I try all the time to get my athletes to stop drinking. If they need to have a social life, if they need to party and they wanna just chill out, right? Go ahead, go ahead and smoke weed. Go ahead and eat edibles. It's not going to make you a bad person, okay? You're not gonna turn into the devil. You're not gonna be horrible. You're not gonna be this just pathetic individual because you smoked weed a little bit. It's not bad. And People who think otherwise grow up. Two, ways of utilizing it. Okay, this is a key factor here. I think it's important to understand that if you're smoking it, if you're utilizing joints, the heat can have a negative impact on your lungs. The heat can affect the way your lungs are clean. So I do believe utilizing a bubbler to cool it down or utilizing a bong or utilizing edibles or utilizing a vaporizer, those are definitely more effective, healthier means of utilizing marijuana. I, I would say, yes, it's still okay to smoke joints here and there, but ideally you would be utilizing a bubbler or edibles to some point. Now, for number three, what sports can benefit from this? And I, I believe, you know, talking about Michael Phelps, Michael Phelps was a swimmer. He clearly benefited from this, right? He utilized it to a point. Ricky Williams, football players. Football players can tremendously benefit from it, not just because of THC, but also because of CBD and how CBD can have a positive impact on brain inflammation. So this can be a positive factor. And I also believe the culture of football tends to be very related to alcohol. And if that switches and that gets away from late night boozing and, and uh, late night violence and changes into late night video game playing and eating Skittles, it's probably better for the culture, right? Along that, those lines, what's interesting is that Nate Diaz, who has fought in the UFC, is one of the best fighters in the UFC, he utilizes marijuana so much that at times he's tested positive for marijuana, so much so that some of the doctors who analyzed his urine samples have said he was likely stoned while he was fighting, which is impressive. And I personally have been around athletes who actually lift when they're high to a point, who actually lift and then they go home and they get high because they wanna eat a little bit more so that they can recover. So think about strength sports in the realm of throwing, in the realm of Olympic weightlifting. I know a decent amount of weightlifters and a decent amount of throwers that get high, and that's okay. They're not bad human beings. Now, the big factor here is when, right? Because I believe there's a serious problem in having a 16-year-old to a 21, 22-year-old who's going to get high, and they're drinking all the time, and then when they're drunk, they're smoking, okay? 
that's worthless. That's absolutely worthless and it shouldn't happen. I don't believe that that's an effective usage of the marijuana pot plant, okay? It's stupid. It could lead to, again, serious problems in your social life. It can lead to serious problems in your sporting development. It can lead to serious problems in who you are as an individual. So I believe it's important to wait and not utilize marijuana. Wait till you're 23, 24, 25 when things start to get real, when life becomes real and you're stressed and you still have to pay your bills and you have to train to become a world-class athlete and then you wanna to start to utilize marijuana off and on here and there because it's gonna help you with stress management, that's perfectly fine. Now you're mature, now you recognize what it is, now you recognize how it can be utilized to benefit you and that's going to be more effective if you do this at an earlier age when you're 16 17 18 19 years old you're just going to be a turd you're just going to be a stoner you're going to lay around and you probably will be lazy because you're already lazy kids that are under the age of 22 years old they're lazy to begin with so now that they start smoking a little bit of weed and their predisposition to be lazy rises even higher so be aware of that for sure and finally know the benefits know the risks know the legality from where you live and then know the testing threshold it's 150 nanograms per milliliter of urine and that's the key factor here so 150 nanograms per milliliter of urine might mean you should not be smoking seven to nine days before you compete i hope our thorough analysis of marijuana for sports helped you understand the deeper relationship that marijuana has to sporting events. If you want any help with strength-based training and becoming a better athlete, click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com. If you want any information about nutrition, click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.